Groupon has responded to some of its critics in Washington. Lawmakers had raised concerns about the company's privacy practices, given Groupon's plan to offer deals through a mobile app. Groupon's general counsel says the company does not access location data when the app is not running, but in order to offer the service to customers, it needs to be able to track where they are. Meanwhile, Groupon is also feeling heat from the accounting world, and our next guest is including on, included on that list. Tony Katanak teaches accounting at Villanova University. He says the company is still overstating its sales despite Groupon's recent changes to its accounting practices. Also with us is Bloomberg West editor-at-large Corey Johnson. It was Corey's interview with Groupon's CEO uh, chairman that led to the company having to amend its I IPO was, filing is, recently. Uh, Tony, let's, uh, let's start with you and give us the backstory on on why you decided to do this in the first place. I mean, you spent three days going through the IPO filing from the company. Is that not true? That's absolutely true. Uh, I, I'm a, a Kerry McGuire fellow at the American College, and one of the things I'm tasked with doing is researching issues associated with ethical and financial uh, transparency. And so when the whole Groupon ACOSOI metric issue came up, I, uh, I couldn't resist jumping in and looking at you know, uh, 300 pages worth of uh, registration statements to, to look at the accounting. Corey? Yeah, Tony, let me ask you about this. So, so you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time with the S1 as well, and, and the accounting is kind of interesting. And we could start, you know, right away with, with the, the most basic element of Groupon's accounting, the revenue issue. Now, I, I, Tony, I want to take a second to explain this. Uh, this is our production assistant, Alexander Wolf. He went on Groupon today, entered his location, his age, his interests, and Groupon targeted an offer for him. It was $50 worth of bikini sugaring and hair removal services for 25 bucks. Now, a wonder that a technology that scales to target relevant deals based on individual subscriber preferences picks him. We'll, we'll leave that aside. But here's how the revenue breakdown works. So if you look at the revenue breakdown, there's a chart of Groupon's reported revenues and gross profits. So what these guys do is they take... $25 of a bikini wax, 50% goes to Groupon, 50% goes to, uh, to the consumer, so, or to, to this, you know, the spa, the waxer, if you will, $12.50. So Groupon is actually taking their gross profit and the revenue, they reported the sort of gross revenue number. Uh, what's that all about? What, how is that accounting treatment right or wrong? Well, this, uh, this whole issue of gross versus net revenue recognition, it arose during our last dot-com bubble uh, in 1999. And uh, what you had is you had a lot of Internet companies that were reporting that gross revenue issue. And since that time, there's been uh, quite a, a wealth of accounting pronouncements to come out and give uh, accountants criteria on how to book revenue gross versus net. And what's really interesting about uh, Groupon's case is there's a variety of indicators that accountants are supposed to look at to determine whether gross or net is appropriate. And the group on accountants uh, very suspiciously picked only one of the many criteria to hang their hat on. And that's wait, what's wait, called... Let me, interrupt you. let me interrupt you right there. Uh, sure. So what you're saying is that, that the guys who decide accounting standards have a couple of standards, and you're, you're saying that Groupon cherry-picked one of those? Uh, that's pretty much it. There's a, a variety of indicators that tell companies which accounting to use, gross versus net. And when you look at all of those indicators, Groupon basically doesn't meet the vast majority of them, except for one which they say they meet, and that's the one that talks about the primary obligor in a transaction. Uh, and what's, what's really interesting about uh, uh, Groupon's selection of this accounting method is that they really created something to get to that accounting treatment. And that something well, that they created was this thing called the Groupon Promise. Well, let me, let me, let me jump in there real quick. So, so I put a chart together that shows the revenues and the operating profit, or the gross profit, I'm sorry, of, of Groupon. And, and you know, it's, it's similar to something you wrote in your report. So if we can pull up the, this chart of the actual re revenues and gross profits, the revenues are a certain number that are pretty big. The profit is a number that is quite a bit smaller. Yeah, correct. Well, in your example that you were talking about earlier, Corey, the, the bikini uh, waxing, the bikini wax example, Alex's Group, bikini waxing, Gru Groupon's booking 25 bucks as the revenue, when in reality, I'm contending they should only be booking $12.50. Uh, and that's now, to be fair, Groupon is reporting that $12.50, but they're reporting it separately as gross profit. 
not as total revenue. And that's significant because the market looks at that top line revenue growth. So essentially in that one example, if you were to extrapolate that through all of the other transactions the Groupon engages in, they're basically reporting twice the amount of revenue that they should be. Uh, and and now, so that's, let, me, let me jump in also because within your report you talk about free cash flow. It's another thing that the market, you know, probably the most important uh, number that any company can report is actual free cash flow. That's and correct. in your recent report, you had some strong words about free cash flow. And read it. You had had merchants been paid in a timely fashion, the company's free cash flows would have been closer to zero and possibly even negative. Why is this kind of thing allowed? Well, this is, uh, Corey, I'm actually an expert in uh, operating cash flow manipulation reporting. And what's happening here is their statement of cash flows was prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. I can't fault them for that. The issue is what created, what drove the increase in free cash flow. And it was simply the fact that they're not paying their vendors in what I would say is a timely fashion. Now, they fully admit that in their uh, registration statement. But let me give you an example. If you don't pay your bills for uh, 30 days, when you're supposed to pay them tomorrow, and you extend that to 60 days, are you going to have more cash flow at the end of the reporting period? And the answer is fairly simple. The answer is yes. And so what's happening right now is their merchant vendor payment model is to delay payment, at least in the United States, to vendors. They wait 60 days. And that's just not sustainable. That's and that was Tony Katanak of Villanova University and the McGuire Fellow at the American College with his concerns about the accounting story at Groupon.